I've just been looking at my YouTube analytics and apparently the most popular non-English speaking place where they're watching my videos is Sweden. Wow. Thank you, Sweden. One of my best friends is Swedish, so I asked them to phonetically write out a message just so I could say a special thank you to all our Swedish viewers. Jojan a massive fnopfuvud. You're welcome. This video is a follow-on from the one I made at the beginning of the month which was itself a follow-on from the one I made last year. I'm not helping here, am I? Anyway, they're all about getting the s Cinetone look on the Sony a7 III and a7S III cameras. Now, I do realise that making a video about camera settings doesn't make for great video content, so I'll try and keep it short. But the thing is, the one I made for the a7S III the one from the beginning of this year, has turned out to be really popular. It's been great to see that a lot of people, they do seem to like the look, and it's proving to be quite a good match for the FX9. Thank you for all the lovely comments. But the problem is, it's now made the original settings for the A7 III look mm, not so good. What a lot of people now want is exactly the same A7S III Cinetone look but on their a7 III. So I promised to look at those again. Now I started with a completely clean sheet of paper. Well, it's white card actually. But I've now mixed in all the new stuff I learned from the a7S III settings. And I'm rather happy. I think it's turned out quite well. Just to be clear, these settings used on your a7 III will give you a very close match to my previous Cinetone settings for the a7S III. We could call it the A7 III Cinetone Settings version 2. As before, it's important to do a proper manual white balance on both cameras if you want to use and match them together. The A7S III nails the correct white figures every time. If I set my lights to, say, 4300K, then 4300 is what I'll get on the camera. But my A7 III always reads about 200k higher, so that would be 4,500k. Remember, yours might be different, but just do a manual white on the same subject with both cameras and you'll be sorted. The only other point I've found is that if I have exactly the same settings on both cameras, that's everything, ISO, aperture, then the a7 III will be very slightly darker. It is really really slight much less than one stop and on final cut pro it works out that you need to lift the brightness by just 0.02 this frame is made up of totally original ungraded footage from my a7 III on the left and the a7s III on the right both using the cinetone settings Lift the brightness by 0.02, and I think you can see these colours look like a perfect match. Nothing else has changed. So without further ado, if you want to match these two cameras, or even an FX9, these are the version 2 settings you'll need in your a7 III. Obviously, use the other settings from the previous video on your a7S III. I'm using Picture Profile 9 again, but you can use whichever one you want. I've got the black level to minus 10. The main gamma is Cine 4. The black gamma is once again range wide, level minus 1. We had a bit of discussion about the knee, but I've left it in manual mode, and that's at 100% and a slope of 0. The colour mode is now the pro setting. The saturation goes down to minus 2, the colour phase is zero, and now the all-important colour depth settings. I've got the red at plus three, green plus one, blue minus one, cyan minus one, magenta minus one, and yellow plus one. I've left the detail level at minus seven. As always, I'll put those settings in the description box below and I'll probably repeat 
the popular A7S3 settings in there as well. All I ask is if you try these settings and you find them useful, drop us a comment. Let us all know and maybe consider subscribing. One channel that has been using these settings is Harv Video and Audio Stuff. I love the information Harv's been sharing on his channel and I recommend you check him out. I'll also put a link to that in the description as well. Until then, thanks for watching. Thank you.